Set seductively between mountains and the sea, Cape Town flaunts its natural beauty with pride. Rising above the city, iconic Table Mountain provides the perfect plateau for panoramic views that stretch to the glittering Atlantic, botanical gardens beckon from its slopes, and the city's long blonde beaches, backed by towering peaks, are some of South Africa's best. Bubbling beneath the surface is an irrepressible sense of adventure, and travelers can join in the fun with a range of outdoor activities, from hiking, biking, surfing, and paragliding, to whale-watching trips and cage dives with great white sharks. The things to do here may depend on the time of year. As the oldest European settlement in Africa, Cape Town has a rich and at times turbulent past. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 rated attractions and things to do in Cape Town. And just wait till you see what's at number one that we're going to be showing in this video, something you would never even have thought of, so make sure you watch till the end. Before we begin, you can help support our channel by becoming a member of this channel. Press the join button below. This will help us to bring you more awesome travel videos. So now, let's cut to the chase. Number 10. Cage Dive with Great White Sharks in the chilly waters off Cape Town's coast, thrill-seekers can come face to face with one of the ocean's most feared predators, great white sharks. Protected by the thick bars of an iron cage, divers score a hefty dose of adrenaline as these magnificent creatures swim within inches of the bars. Tour operators in Cape Town offer shark cage dives in areas such as Simonstown, Dyer Island, Mossel Bay, Seal Island and Gansby, the great white shark capital of the world. The best time to see these magnificent creatures is between April and October. No diving certification is needed since divers are enclosed in the custom-built cages and part of the funds go towards shark research and conservation. Those who prefer to, well, appreciate these awe-inspiring creatures from a distance, bit like me then, can watch all the excitement from the boat. Seal, dolphin, penguin and whale watching tours are also available for less daring animal lovers. Next up at 9, indulge at the Old Biscuit Mill. Located in the heart of Cape Town's trendy college neighbourhood, Woodstock, the Old Biscuit Mill is open all week but is especially lively on weekends when the neighbour goods market happens. Self-described as a community for talented people to collaborate and share their passions, from food and art to clothing and homemade goods, the Old Biscuit Mill is where you'll find some of South Africa's most creative artists and designers. On the grounds, you'll find a range of one-of-a-kind restaurants, food stalls, workshop spaces and designer stores. Every Saturday and Sunday from 9am, the Neighbour Goods Market takes over the parking lots. It offers a full market vibe, with local artisans and designers selling their creations. There are also a host of food and drink vendors. Festivals also happen through the year at the Old Biscuit Mill. At 8, sunset at Signal Hill and the Noon Gun. Five minutes drive west of the city centre, Signal Hill offers stunning views over Cape Town, Table Bay and the glittering Atlantic Ocean from its 350 metre summit. The hill forms the body of the adjacent Lion's Head Peak and was named for its historical use when signal flags were flown from here to send messages to approaching ships. Many locals and visitors drive up to watch the sunset and stay to see the shimmering lights of Cape Town ignite after dark. At noon every day, except Sundays and public holidays, a cannon activated by an electronic impulse from the observatory fires a single shot. In earlier days, this noon gun served to give the exact time to ships anchored in the bay. Tourists are welcome to attend a free presentation on the history of the noon gun at the Lion Battery and then stay to watch the firing. Those headed to the top of the hill for sunset views should take a jacket as it can be chilly after the sun dips. On busy weekends and holidays, go early to score a parking spot. At 7. Cruise along Chapman's Peak Drive about 25 kilometres from the city centre, Chapman's Peak Drive, affectionately called Chappies by the locals, is one of the most jaw-dropping driving routes in the world. Cut into the sheer face of Chapman's Peak, which plunges to the sea, this spectacular toll road snakes its way for about 9 kilometres between Noordhurk and Hout Bay, passing panoramic Chapman's Peak Point along the way. 
With 114 curves carved into the rock face, some perched more than 500 meters above the sea, this is not a route for those well prone to motion sickness. Around sunset, cars cram along the panoramic viewpoints as sightseers stake a spot to watch the sun sink while sipping a cool drink in the time-honored South African tradition known as sundowners. Look for southern right whales and dolphins in the sparkling Atlantic Ocean below and drive slowly and carefully. The road was closed on and off for several years due to rockfall dangers, but it has now been stabilized and is open every day, except during severe weather events. As well as being used as a location for TV commercials, Chapman's Peak Drive is the setting for the popular Cape Argus Cycle Race and Two Oceans Marathon. After admiring the magnificent sea views, hungry travellers can feast on fresh fish at one of the excellent seafood restaurants in Hout Bay. At 6, pay respect at Robben Island. For nearly 400 years, Robben Island in Table Bay was a brutal prison where Nelson Mandela spent 18 years in a tiny cell during the apartheid era. Today, the island is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a must-see attraction for anyone interested in South African history. Tours to the island begin with multimedia exhibits in the museum at the Nelson Mandela Gateway on the Victoria and Alfred waterfront before travellers board vessels to the island. The boat trip takes about 30 minutes to an hour depending on weather conditions and can be rough during big swells. While on the island, visitors tour the maximum security prison, Mandela's former cell, and the lime quarry where prisoners were forced to endure back-breaking labor. The interesting part about the tour is that the guides are former prisoners of Robben Island who share their experiences and offer insight into the atrocities of apartheid and the power of forgiveness. After leaving this hellish six square kilometer island, Mandela said, as I walked out the door toward the gate that would lead to my freedom, I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I'd still be in prison. These wise words are even more potent after a tour here. The Cape Town Townships tour, including Robben Island, gives visitors an overview of South Africa's past and present. The full-day small group guided tour includes a round-trip ferry to Robben Island, a visit to Cape Town's District 6 Museum and the communities of nearby townships of Langa and Gugulethu. And now at five, ride the Cape Wheel. Walking around the Victoria and Alfred waterfront, it is impossible to miss the Cape Wheel in the Market Square area. The giant wheel features 30 fully enclosed cabins with air conditioning that take you on about a 15-minute ride in four loops with 360-degree bird's-eye views. At the top of the wheel, you'll be about 120 feet above the ground, and the panoramic views of Cape Town city centre and harbour, Table Mountain, the Cape Town Stadium in nearby Green Point, and even the Pearl Mountains is stunning on a clear day. The Cape Wheel is also wheelchair accessible with two specially adapted cabins. The wheel operates daily from 9am to 7pm. Four. Shop the Victoria and Alfred Waterfront. Stretching around two harbour basins, the Victoria and Alfred Waterfront is a buzzing entertainment quarter reminiscent of Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. Once a scruffy fishing harbour, this reimagined waterfront district is now one of the city's top tourist attractions and many of the old buildings have been preserved and restored. Millions of visitors a year flock here to the shops, jazz venues, restaurants, hotels, theatres, drama school, cinemas and museums. Sports fans will love the Springbok Experience Rugby Museum, which traces the story of South African rugby through interactive exhibits. Two Oceans Aquarium features more than 300 species of fish from the Atlantic and Indian Oceans, in particular from the area around the Cape of Good Hope. Highlights include a touch tank, penguin encounter, predator exhibit and diving experiences, which allow visitors to view fascinating marine creatures up close. Trips to Robben Island leave from the Nelson Mandela Gateway on the waterfront, but anyone is welcome to explore the museum exhibits here. West of the waterfront, the trendy Green Point Precinct is also home to the lovely Green Point Urban Park, with its biodiversity garden, as well as the Cape Town Stadium, which hosted many FIFA World Cup matches in 2010. Next up at three, sunbathe at Clifton and Camps Bay Beaches. About six kilometers from the city center, the beaches of Camps Bay and Clifton lure the buff, the bronzed and the beautiful, as well as the big bucks. 
At Clifton, Cape Town's Saint-Tropez, some of the city's priciest real estate overlooks four gleaming white sand beaches, flanked by smooth granite boulders and washed by sparkling but crisp blue seas. First Beach is a favourite volleyball venue and offers decent surf when the conditions are right. Just south of Clifton, Trendy Camps Bay sports another stunning beach, backed by the magnificent Twelve Apostles and the distinctive peak of Lion's Head. People watching is an art along this pretty palm-lined stretch, as well as at the chic cafes and boutiques fringing Victoria Street, especially during weekends and holidays when locals and tourists throng here to soak up the scene. Camps Bay and Clifton's fourth beach boast coveted blue flag status awarded for clean water, safety and environmental management, making them a great choice for families as well. At 2, Wanda Kurtzenbosch National Botanical Gardens. In a beautiful setting on the eastern slopes of Table Mountain, Kirsten Bosch Botanical Gardens are part of the Cape Floristic Region UNESCO World Heritage Site. The site was bequeathed to the state by Cecil Rhodes in 1902 and the gardens were established in 1913 to preserve the country's indigenous flora one of the first botanical gardens in the world with this mission. More than 20,000 native South African plant species are collected, grown and studied in the hilly 528 hectare nature reserve of indigenous forest and fynbos. Of particular historical interest are a hedge of wild almond trees planted by Jan van Riebeck in 1660 and an avenue of camp haw and fig trees planted by Cecil Rhodes in 1898. The flowers, shrubs and trees are arranged so that a show of blossoms and colour brightens the gardens throughout the year. Don't miss the Proteus, the scented garden, the impressive collection of cycads, the sculpture garden and the Botanical Society Conservatory, a custom-built greenhouse with plants from arid regions. Well-marked trails thread through the wooded slopes and the tree canopy walkway provides panoramic views across the mountain-backed gardens. One of the trails leads through a ravine to the summit of Table Mountain. In summer, the gardens make an evocative venue for outdoor concerts. Green thumbs and garden lovers should also visit Company's Garden, an oasis of exotic trees, flowers, aviaries and ponds in the heart of the city. While here, visitors can also explore the Iziko South African Museum and Planetarium and the Iziko National Gallery. And finally, at number one, Climb Table Mountain. Rising 1,087 metres south of the city centre, flat-topped Table Mountain is the most photographed landmark in South Africa and a constant reminder that nature is queen in this stunning seaside city. Created from massive beds of sandstone and slate, the mountain forms the northern end of the Cape Peninsula and lies within Table Mountain National Park. The park protects an astounding diversity of plants and more than 1,470 flower species, the plant's richest floral kingdom, as well as animals such as cute snub-nosed dasses, rock hydraxes, caracals and baboons. Within the park, Devil's Peak flanks the mountain on the east and Lion's Head on the west, while the crags known as the Twelve Apostles loom over the beach resorts on the Atlantic coast. A layer of clouds called the Tablecloth frequently cloaks the mountain's peak, but when the clouds clear, visitors can enjoy spectacular views of Cape Town and the entire Cape Peninsula from the summit. Bring a sweater as it can be cold and windy at the top. For those short on time and energy, a revolving cableway climbs to the summit, covering the distance of 1,244 metres in seven minutes. The cableway runs daily except in high winds, so it's a good idea to check the website or call for current conditions before heading out. Also to avoid long lines, try booking tickets online. At the upper station of the cableway, a cafe features a small viewing terrace and serves as the starting point of three short walks, which highlight the gigantic scale of the landscape. Those wishing to summit the mountain on foot can choose between more than 350 different routes, varying in difficulty. Depending on the starting point, the climb takes between two to four hours. For superb views of Table Mountain and the best vantage point to photograph this iconic landmark, hike or drive up Signal Hill or Lion's Head. Both offer stunning views from their summits. And there you have the top 10 rated attractions and things to do in Cape Town. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides.
Check out more videos on South Africa in our South African Travel Guide playlist. That's all for now. Until next time.